Three turn, holy sight. There we go. That'll do. And this should improve the breathtakingness of the tiles around me quite nicely. My capital is now breathtaking. That's giving me uh, extra science per turn, which is just beautiful. Perfect. Three archers, machinery boosted. That's me safe. That's good. Two holy sites being put down now. That's even better. And you can see Rome has already put down an absolute ton of theatre squares. Okay, we're going to have a real problem uh, beating them. Wow. That's insane. They've got theatre squares of amphitheatres and they are just gunning for it. Okay, a very cultural Rome. 49 culture to start with. These small maps are terrifying for that. I have to keep an eye on like culture victories from pretty much an early time. Oh dear. Right, never mind. I haven't changed my government around in ages, which is really stupid. Urban planning and let's go for... Oh, discipline. That will help to keep these barbs at bay. Check out my unique holy site though. Isn't it cool? It gets put on like a little little mountain. Oh, it's gorgeous. Right next to all of the of the actual mountains. Like I could imagine if that was sort of like in here somewhere, that would be beautiful. Man, I love that. I love that already. Now I can pick up a shrine. Shrines are good. No one's getting a religion right now, so we're not um, rushing holy site projects through. But you can see, because it's next to a mountain, I can actually get the shrine in for faith, 110 faith. So. We're not going to do that just yet. What I'm going to do is put the government encampment down, or the government plaza down. Now, I don't think that improves mountains. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Uh, Magnus, in you get to my capital. We're going to stick provision down on you in a couple turns, and then I'll start cranking the settlers out. Yes, oh, that is a wonder right next to the Vatican, which appears to be getting killed by Rome. Oh, dear. Rome never likes the Vatican, really, do they? <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Holy, uh, I could get Hong Kong just to improve visibility in this area. It would give me a few more uh, diplomatic favor points per term that would help me to sell them. Yeah, I think it's worth just picking them up. Gives me some era score as well. So, okay, yeah, loads and loads and loads of warriors. I'm, I'm, I might do the trick of moving the warriors over to the right of the map and then going to kill them. I think it would be a good pickup for me, really. Feels harsh. Feels very harsh, but honestly, I'm going to do it anyway. There's provision. Done. Nice. Awesome. Oh, granted a free builder from a tribal hut. Nice. That's actually really helpful. Uh, which tiles am I working? I really need to get lumber yards. Now that would be an exciting thing. Have I also got any of these tiles that are kind of on the edge of being beautiful? Hmm, not really that I can do anything about. Okay, that's fine. Sometimes you see those plus threes, you're like, okay, for my pantheon, if I chop down a rainforest, that'll be a good start. But no, for now, it's all fine. Settler time. Very good for me. Okay, right, we're generating these settlers nice and early now. Magnus, I don't really need anything else in, so I'm just going to pick up Pingala. Now, this city is a bit slow, a bit rubbish at the moment, but look at all these rainforest chops it's got going. So that population will increase nice and quickly. My favour already, I'm starting to be able to sell for decently, deliciously large amounts of gold. I'm still selling my horses. I've got open borders I've just flogged. But I think that's like six gold per turn I just managed to get from all that. Excellent stuff. And I do have provision. So now is the time to start throwing my gold at settlers. Well, Vatican's going down. It's really going down. Okay. And we've now got a friend because a Manatori loves the fact that I'm making districts. Ah, oh, they don't want to be my actual friend though. They're just going to tease me. They're going to tease me for a bit. Never mind. Oh god, these archers are so much better at keeping me safe. It's always that, it's a big breath of relief when you pick up archers, isn't it? And you're like, oh, thank god. I'm immune. I'm invincible to everything. Oh, she just told me off now that there are so few people living in my empire. There we go, Nishi's my friend. So we managed to get rid of that one, but oh my goodness, just make up your mind, please. I guess they're not mutually exclusive, are they? I can have loads of districts and just no one living in them. Which I guess is kind of what she was saying. Hmm. Seems like a very strange set of agendas there. It's like, I want you to have loads of people and also have districts. I guess it's just, really, she's, she's like a mother figure, isn't she? She just wants the best for me. And I respect that. Um, there is Third City. Huzzah! Lovely stuff, right? Let's just get my archer, keeping it nice and safe. Look at this. That is a gorgeous tile already. Two food, one culture. No, sorry. Two food, one science, one faith. Why did I struggle with that? Weird. Um, I want to put a preserve down in this district. That's going to make a huge thing. So I'm getting political philosophy and then I'm going to actually skip it. I'm going to go mysticism 
and we're going to do that preserve first instead of my unique yeah i think that that's a that's a fun thing to do oh hello the cree want tobacco he really wants tobacco his pipe is empty oh man i can't have that 15 gold per turn lovely that that helps that helps a lot you know how i said i felt safe when i had archers that doesn't mean the barbs get archers oh ruining my day how many days have been ruined over the years by barbs eh so you know i said that the trick to this game was being consistent and having a solid strategy that i can stick to well think again i've changed my mind we're going engineering because nobody is building mashu pishu so i'm going to put ancient walls up in my capital we're going to rush it and invariably i'm going to put like 10 turns worth of production into it have it stolen and then get really sad all sound good perfect time to flood pingala with the tastiest of jungle juice mmm lovely stuff god chops early game are so rubbish oh this is why i like rushing things late game so much better you chop things and it's like oh would you like 300 production it's like yes yes i would like 300 production thank you so much just quick switch to urban planning oh thank you so much and as i do that just giving everyone a little bit more production which is tasty and we chop this rainforest get rid of the rainforest hashtag burn it all to the ground You'll notice that we can now build preserves. Now preserves are awesome because they will basically culture bomb the entirety of this area. Now, should I really wait and chop that rainforest down? Yes. Am I gonna wait? No, because I wanna just get it done. So 26 turns off. It's gonna take a while, but it's gonna be worth it. When we get it, it's gonna be good. I think Jerusalem would actually see a lot of the map. This might actually connect the world for me and let me prove that it's round. It does. So I get five error score for doing that. Tasty. We're going to go into a perfect monumentality mid game. That's the idea. I've also accumulated a bunch of faith, and I just realized, of course, I can build a shrine with it. So I shall. Using faith to get more faith seems balanced. Seems very, very balanced. Oh my word, that tobacco is worth a lot. I missed that initially. Yep, just still selling things. If I can sell it, if it can be put on a wagon and flogged for a high price, it's gone. It's dead to me immediately. 680 for a settler. Oof, that's expensive. Never mind, never mind. Vatican City's been defeated and they just, they just pulverized it to the ground. You gotta love Rome's style there. Wow. Well, no Vatican in the game. Rome disliked the Pope to such a large degree that he was like, I would rather you dead. And... I respect that. <laughs> I respect that an awful lot. Let's get a preserve in this tile. There we go. This will just give these two cities some lovely little mountain tiles. I think that'll be four food, one science, two faith, two culture. I think. I might be wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong. I can't tell you how much I'm actually looking forward to playing a preserve heavy game. I do not remember the last time we did this. It's going to be hilarious. What Political philosophy, give me please the classical republic. That seems to be the government that really most respects the hat of glory. Look at it. I didn't mention this at the time, but that yellow hat is just, it's just beautiful. I, I honestly think I could gaze into the eyes of God by looking directly into that hat. I'm not even joking. Oh, oh, you don't you dare create. Oh, you bastards. They're going to settle right on it. I can just tell. You just tell already. Get the profit card quickly and we'll back that up with some more. Do we go settling or corvée? Let's go corvée because this counts as a classical wonder. Mashi Pishi. So that's good. First envoy counts as two. Great. Now we can pick up the letter. That's what I was waiting for. Rome's already on crossbows, which is a little bit frightening. The Korea are on 16 techs. But <laughs> look at this. That's that, like Nubia has 91 signs per turn and there are only four techs above me. But what are they doing? Also, Rome is now up to eight great writer points per turn. They are not messing around. Bloody hell. 12 tourism per turn already. We've got to keep an eye on them. There is a chance that they are going to solidly get themselves into a really good tourism position. I only have three domestic tourists right now. Whoops. <laughs> I need to get that sorted. I need to get that sorted pretty quickly. Also, I've just got enough faith now that I can purchase my next shrine in. Boom. Tasty stuff. Seat number four, again settling on top of tobacco. I'm pretty sure no one else wants it. Oh no, they do. Okay, cool. We got a little bit of tobacco. My gold. Great. 
Should I feel bad that I'm basically, you know, powering my economy by selling the world tobacco? Probably. But I'm not really, I don't really feel that sad. I'm popping preserves up now in a lot of different places. This one is kind of on the edge of my empire, so like a couple of these mountains aren't going to get worked. But I will be settling here at some point, so it, it's fine. We'll get there. People engineering, engineering. Right, once the preserve is done, mashy pishu. I'm going to put it on this mountain to the north because it's not really doing anything there. So now that I've got engineering, I think actually getting myself some commercial hubs or some harbors might be a good thing. Harbors just fit in the map better and there are some lakes that could be utilized to push a load of uh, yield onto the mountains is what I'm thinking. Whereas commercial hubs are sort of fighting for space a little bit. I don't know, maybe. Let's go sailing quickly and then we'll go from there. Sailing is very important on this landlocked map and I won't hear otherwise there's a Barb camp destroyed as well. So Mashi Pishu being built. Again, we'll just keep checking. Found zero results. Well, it's right there, so it's a bit worrying, isn't it? <laughs> hmm. Actually, once I've got sailing, construction is where I want to be going so I can boost the production in my capital. I've got so much unimproved forest that I'm working here. Yeah, I think that's got to be it. There's the profit. We have it. Perfect. Only the one religion to the Cree has gone so far, so we should have pretty decent choice. Oh my goodness, we can have a goat religion. They are the mountain goats. They will feed us. They will clothe us. They will bathe us in glory. Again, I'd like to remind you that we are using the extended religions, so you will see at uh, the mod, sorry, so that means we have more options. Like, for instance, fruits of labor you won't recognize, and indulgences. Oh no, wait, that could actually be... I think that might be in the game. I might just be making that up. Ignore me. Anyway, industrial zoning, harbour buildings, commercial hub, entertainment complex, water park buildings, all of that stuff, like Jesuit education, which will be hidden down here as well, doesn't matter because I can use my faith to buy all that stuff anyway. That's all fantastic. So what we're going to be doing is getting something that stacks nicely. Well, you know what? I'm going to go for it. Feed the world. It's here. I've had the option to get it for a few games and I haven't. And I just can't resist it. It's too good. It's too good. Three housing and two food from shrines and temples. It's actually flipped around. It used to, was it normally two housing and three food? I think this mod may have changed it slightly. So there we go, we are actually using a modded version of it. Ah, oh, perfect. Now, spreading my religion around, that does really good things for me. I can actually use it to get great writer points. Not that that's gonna help much because Rome is picking up all the great writers, but what are we going to do? If I want to pick up those great writers, I'm going to have to buy them from Rome. So I think getting something we haven't done before, charitable missions, using a religious unit to convert a city's religion for the first time, receives 50 gold for each citizen in that city. That's going to be a huge wadge of gold, and I can use that to buy the art and the writing from Rome. That might work really well. So... Yeah, anyway, Feed the World means that we've now got a foodie, housey shrine in Lhasa, in um, this city here. And all that extra housing and all that extra food means more population, which means I can work more of these deliciously juicy mountain tiles. Mmm, don't forget, we now have mystical mountain goats working them. It's going to be gorgeous. Goodness me, though, Rome is spreading. Look at them. Their empire truly is that of Jupiter. Keep an eye on them, they are coming towards me rapidly. So using a missionary on my own city will not give me writer points, but it will give me gold because of my religion. So, boom, 150 gold, just because it was a free pop city. I mean, that, that's great. We, we need to really start to spread it. Yeah, this gold, actually that gold is a huge economic boost that I can use to, to build some stuff. First time anybody gets a 10 pop city. Of course, brilliant city, that's why. Oh, for goodness sake, someone built it. I was almost entirely done with it. Oh, that's so frustrating. Okay, well, I guess we can use that to now give ourselves the Ancestral Hall, but like, oh, I knew that was going to happen. That's very frustrating. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Lumber mills. Okay, right, these are going to be good tiles already. It's the extra science that does it for me. That's really tasty. I can't believe that. Who did it? I still can't, I can't see whoever did it. It's probably going to be the Cree. Yeah, I bet it's the Cree because I don't know much about their lands at the moment. Cheeky so-and-sos, eh? Now, this is the worst trade route for me, but it puts the road down in the best place and it means I can actually move my units between these two cities. There's horrible hills, forests, rivers, rainforests. I mean, yeah, that's going to make a huge difference. 
Next tiny chunk of gold. It's only 100 this time, but again, gives me a bit of error score. Helps me to go through. Uh, apart from McCree, who do have a religion, nobody else really does. So I'm actually tempted to send a couple of missionaries down to Rome and get a huge chunk of gold. That would be good. There is a Cree missionary just wandering through my lands, though. Could you not? I, I'm having this sort of game where I am just, like, not in the mood. Check out this, though. This is entirely breathtaking tiles. So, if I build myself a grove, it's 600 gold, but it's worth it because... Bump! <laughs> oh, yes, already. Already this plan is going to start coming together very quickly. Are you sure you really want to be working that? There we go. I was going to say, these are better tiles now. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's an interesting choice here. I would normally go for a golden age and jump immediately on your two monumentality because then I could use my faith and my gold to purchase settlers. But here's the thing. I'm not going to use my faith to purchase settlers at all because I'm using my faith to purchase buildings and fun things for my civilization, making the cities I've got better. So do I do Exodus of the Evangelists? I mean, that also is a use of faith. This is my problem. I've only got so much faith. I want to be able to put temples down and more holy sites, and I guess that means doing monumentality first. And then that means I can sort of use my gold to put settlers down for cheaper? We'll do that. I, I'm not entirely sure that's the best option for me, but that's what I'm going to go for right now. It means I can buy another settler. Yeah, okay, that's good. I'm kind of building them. Monumentality is useful. I'll stick with it for a little bit. What I will do is just purchase this tile there, and then I'll go to this city and purchase that tile. None of those are going to be worked until I pick up my grove for a bit of faith, and then bam. Oh yeah, that's some, there's some good yields in those tiles all of a sudden. Very good. In fact, actually, I'm just going to let you work both of those, because this, this city's got all of the mountain tiles to the right of it. Double production towards city centres, and let's go for ranged being a little bit better. See if that goes through. Melee went through. Okay, no problem. I got shipbuilding so that my scouts, who are all stuck, can now hit the sea and escape. That's pretty cool. I've got one settler on the way down to this city, which is a good spot for myself. And then this one, you start to head down in this way, please. How much faith for a temple? 190 faith. That's pretty good. We like that. We like that a lot. Let's, um, okay, let's get some builders. Improve the infrastructure. Go from there. And I'll pick up the letter at the same time. It'll give me it a lot of visibility map. over the center of the map. There. Mount Everest. And the Cree lands. Can we see Mashu Pishu? No. Okay, we're just gonna have to assume it's there and be just really, really annoyed at them. Continually. Switching in scripture though, rather than urban planning. Anything that gives me more faith, that's gonna come back and pay me many times over because I'm going to be using faith for pretty much everything. Lhasa as well can also grow a little bit more but I am actually tempted to give the chop to my Pingala city but no it's better to stay in my capital because I get 50% more so bam like that lovely. Oh why did you settle there? Cree. Oh I was going to put something there. How frustrating. Okay right well if they've done that I guess I've got one settler coming down there that's the only one I can fit in that sort of region. Maybe I could settle something down on the coast in this area. That might not be the worst idea. Um, our aqueduct possibilities. I've kind of hit that point where I can start to think about aqueduct cities as being reasonable alternatives. Don't forget, not all of my cities have to be in or around mountains. I, I find it fun, but it, it's not its not a requirement. Let's put one up there. I have a desert city. Pyramids went on like turn 20, unfortunately. That would have been a really fun pickup, but never mind. Boom! Right, there's a builder. Chopping rainforest down has never been more fun, and now I can get my unique district down. Where am I going to put it? Somewhere, I think, that gives me a good range of mountain tiles to improve. I think this one might be a good space for that. So let's just chop down quickly that rainforest, and then I'll do it from there. Oh, is that going to be 250 gold? Yes, it is. Lovely. And that, five great writer points. Ah. Okay, I need 120 of them to get the writer because Rome has taken, I think, all of the Renaissance writers. Oh yeah, they did. Sorry, classical. One, two, three, four, five. They did a great job. That's really good for the long run. It means all the writers are in play. So I can, in theory, start to think 
about buying them. If I just keep an eye out, let's have a look. Not diplomatic favor, great works. And we'll go for a writing. You can see that they're valuing them at about 400 gold each, which isn't too bad. We'll just hold off that for a second and I'll just, I'll just see what the market is like the writers in the future. But there is a temple, three food, six faith, and some more housing as well. I mean, that's just, just a lovely thing. So I've chopped that rainforest. Now I can stick my district down. I do love, I love them. I love the look of them. They're so cool. I mean, look at it. It's just like its own little mountain complex. The artwork is just beautiful. I can pick up Cardiff as well. It's just basically more diplomatic favor every turn, which I'm then just selling immediately. No one's buying horses at the moment, unfortunately, but I don't really need those, so that's okay. Oh, one cotton selling for 15 gold per turn. Thank you. I changed my mind slightly on the settling down on this south coast. I'm going to squeeze this city not onto the tobacco, but one over so I can fit another one in here. I think that's going to be the better option for me. There's an amazing preserve tile that I can pop down quickly, but I think we're going to start with the holy site which I'm going to just sort of, you know, do after I've got a build. I think builders, builders are important. I need to get feudalism in quickly, actually. And a printer ship. I was building the Mahabodhi temple on this tile, but I'm going to get myself an industrial zone quickly. I'd like to put as many mountains that I can work, like all of these ones with a bit more production. That would be relatively fun. Or I could put it there and get this mountain range to have a little bit more production. Now let's stick it. Let's stick it down there. Mahabodhi Temple. I'm just going to double check. Uh, is someone building that? No. That's what it told me last time, so I don't trust it. But it, it will be fine. There's my holy site, though, so I'm just going to quickly get the shrine in for a bit of gold. And then use my faith to get a temple. There we go. My cities are going to start to grow very quickly now. My <laughs> scout just literally dove into the water headfirst and got surrounded immediately by two scout like galleys, like, oh, it was horrendous. What they were doing in that lake, I don't know, but there you go. Iron working. Okay, I've got some iron I can start to sell to people now. That'll be a nice thing indeed. And another city down here. Yay! It's actually really, really good reef tile down there. Perfect. Two. There is machinery and my capital now has itself a workshop. A bit more ex production. I could get it in with faith. Perfect stuff. Mahabodhi Temple. Let's finish that off now. I've saved myself approximately like zero turns by doing it in that order, but at least now I'm getting some engineer points. I'd quite like to pick up a Seodor if I can help it. He's really good. So I've built a pretty decent infrastructure in the first 98 turns. I'm weirdly close to 100 science per turn. That's mainly because of the pantheon I've got going on these mountain tiles. It's, I mean, it's beautiful. I'm starting to really work the mountain tiles like crazy now. It's just just fantastic to see but what victory type i go for i mean it's a little bit annoyingly sort of split nubia is just going for every single scientist in the game rome is going for every single writer nubia is also starting to pick up the engineers nobody's going for merchants yet so maybe merchants would be a good place to take this now actually how many turns have we got in this era and no, we're still in the medieval era and we've got quite a few of those to go so i could get some merchants pretty easily uh, might not be the worst idea, actually. Lots of gold on my mountain tiles. Um, industrial zones are pretty good as well because it's the breathtakingness of the mountains is what I'm going for rather than the tiles on the ground. So that helps as well. Let's go for, let's go for a diplomatic quarter first, though. That's always a good thing to pick up because I always miss out on the envoys if I don't go for it. But yeah, victory type. I still don't know at the moment what we're going to go for. I was tempted to go for a religious victory, but again, hmm, don't know. Maybe we'll start aggressively spreading our religion, see how it goes. Normally, Set if Yerevan is in the game, democracy. that's what will make me do that. Because if I see Yerevan, I'm like, okay, I, I can just do that perfectly. That's awesome. Uh, call they, pick that up. Perfect. Good. Eight turns till the temple's finished. Another city down here. And now we get the five charge builders, which help a lot. So I quite like to put a camp on that tile. This is one of the first uh, districts I'm going to build, actually, where I can get myself an extra governor for putting it down on a four mountain area. So that's pretty cool. Oh, another city state. How did I miss that one? 
Samarkand. Okay, cool. Builders can make trading dome improvements. It's not what I want, but it's a useful one. Holy site is now complete. Awesome. You can see, oh, it's spreading lots of tasty faith to all of these mountains. That's a really cool thing. And again, we're going to just pick up a shrine followed by a temple just to get the uh, faith pattern up nicely, but also because it gives me food and housing just to let my city grow as big as it possibly can get. Oh, my archer just ventured into the water and a barbarian caravel immediately appeared and killed it in one turn. This <laughs> this game is pretty brutal. <laughs> it's just... It's the AI are just so so teched like it, it's it's Nubia. How are they? Have they taken the tech lead? They must have done soon. Thirty techs versus my twenty-one. Yeah, they are starting to rush ahead now. It took them a while to get going, but they are finally converting that science into techs now. Oh, a governor title. Brilliant. Pingala now has grants. Okay, cool. I'm just I'm rivaling on engineer points. These are the ones I want to pick up. I'm just gonna. Shall I force buy it? I might force buy it just to rush through things like Mahabodhi Temple. There's some cheaper wonders still available to us, and I kind of want to pick those up as well. But there is a nice shrine, and there is a nice temple as well. Oh, these cities don't follow my religion. Oh, we're going to have to do something about that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to buy a Seador. Perfect. I'm not going to use him on the Mahabodhi Temple, but I wanted him more than James and St. George, because building walls is... Not very interesting if you've got the letter. Mahabodhi body temple. I get the diplomacy victory points, which is kind of a small a thing, but place. the main thing is the two three apostles. I just thought, I very rarely build this. It could be fun. Bit of extra, just everything. Plus, it looks really cool next to my holy site in the mountains. It's really pretty. Awesome. So, let's just quickly, uh, let's double evangelize, shall we? One and then two and see what we've got going on. In terms of the building, I'm going to just stick with the with the mosque. Sounds a bit boring, but extra spread when I use my missionaries around, it really will help hugely. And I'm also going to go for missionary zeal, which makes my missionaries ignore all of the copious amounts of hills and rainforest on this map. That'll, that'll help a lot. I have already starting to get spare governors. This could be a theme of this playthrough. I'm going to stick it in Jerusalem. Um, Jerusalem, the holy sites acting as holy cities means that my religion is and should be spreading pretty well to other people around. But look, converts in one turn. And no, 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 no. Oof, 200 gold, perfect. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Matthew Wilkinson, Salty Tech, Davalex, Trefidaspi, Paul Coffey, Kroger Brand Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Portland, Petra Ryan, and Matthew Hatch. For all of your support and for everybody that generally helps the channel to thrive, thank you all very much. See you next time.